Hi, my name is Jonathan Bukhara. I've been a C++ developer for six years, and I work for Murex, and I also run the blog Fluent C++. I'm here today to talk to you about polymorphism. Polymorphism is something that we typically learn quite early in our career as software developers, but that's something that I believe we don't use to its full capacity. But it's tremendously useful to master polymorphism to write well-designed code. More specifically, the message that I want to get across today is that there's much more than one type of polymorphism and that we need to be able to pick the right one for our situation. And I'm going to show you how. The outline I'll propose to you for this talk is this. First off, we're going to make sure we're in line when we talk about polymorphism and what that is, and then we'll get to the bulk of the presentation, which is the moments that polymorphism is resolved, and I use C++ as an example. With that knowledge with us, we'll get to one practical example to illustrate how to pick the right one in a situation. We'll use mocking. All right, let's dive in. When I talk about polymorphism, I'm in a situation where there's a contract that's implemented by a variety of things. I'm purposefully vague in the word component because it can be so many things. It can be a class, it can be a function, or it can be so many other things. I think that's a pretty good definition for polymorphism because it kind of sticks to the word as in a variety, like the several things that can implement one contract, as in an agreement of functionality to provide. And the reason why I think it's important to talk about that is because, to me, polymorphism is not going away anytime soon. Languages change, technology evolve, paradigms shift, but I think that polymorphism goes beyond one particular language, for example. If we Take that example of a contract implemented by several things, stick the word morphism, um, then I can have clients talking to that contract and this effectively separates clients from implementers and this brings modularity. And modularity is something that goes well beyond one particular technology or language. Right, now that we're getting that, let's get into um, the very moment that polymorphism is resolved. Okay, I'm going to use C++ for this example because I'm a C++ developer. Uh, but there's no prerequisite of C++ whatsoever. I'll explain everything all along. These four steps are the steps that source code goes through from text to running code on your machine. What I'm going to show is that at every single one of those steps, there is one form of polymorphism. So let's start with the first one, the preprocessor. The preprocessor in C++ is something that does manipulation on the text of the source code. One simple thing that it does is this instruction, hash define, hash define A, B, is essentially a search and replace um, in the source code. So if there's an occurrence of A, it's going to be changed by B, right? Let's see that in, exa in an example. So I've got these two classes, square and lightning bolts. Okay, there are two sort of shapes, right? And I'm going to use hash define here. So in this code, there is a hash define that replaces shape with square and another hash define that replaces shape with lightning bolts. But just a word, right? That's text. And there's a if, it's a hash if def that checks if a particular variable is defined. And if it is, it's going to 
hash defined shape into square, and if it's not, it's going to hash defined uh, shape into lightning bolt. This is code that uses it. Okay, so in the code, I use the word shape. And this is going to interpret differently the word shape. Let's run that into a compiler. I'm going to use G++, which is a common compiler for C++, and I'm going to send this variable. I'm going to define it in G++. It's called use a square, and I'm compiling this file, main.cpp. And this is the output, right? Because it's going through the if branch. And if I don't define use a square, then I go to the other branch. And this is polymorphism. This is polymorphism because there's a contract which is having a method called draw and taking no parameter. So that's one kind of polymorphism that we don't see that often, but it's still polymorphism. Now, the next step of source code is compilation, where the pre processed code, which is still text, is transformed into binary code. One way to do polymorphism at that stage is to use templates, which is one of the most powerful features of C++, um, and that can take a parameter that's known at compile time, like a type, for example, or a constant, um, and the syntax is like that. It's written template, and there, there are these angle brackets. OK, so let's see it through code. So I've got this function, f, that takes a shape, but shape is not a type, it's a template, right? Because it's written template just above. Now, I'm going to use this function in some calling code. I still have my class square, and I pass it to f. Now, the compiler recognized I'm calling f with a type that's square. So it's going to recognize that what I mean by shape in that particular call is a square. So it's going to instantiate some code using square, actual code, and call its method draw on it. If I use it with another type, lining bolt, the same thing is going to happen. The compiler is going to recognize that I'm using a lightning bolt, which is a different type than square, and it's going to instanti instantiate new code using a lightning bolt, and that's polymorphism. The contract here is still having a method that's called draw and taking no parameter. The next step of the travel of, of source code in C++ is link. After compilation, I've got every file that's compiled. So I've got several binary files, but it's not one executable. Linking consists in bringing these binary files together into one executable. So. Let's say I've got these two files. I've got the file on the left, that's the caller that uses a class that's called shape this time, and it has a method draw. Now, this particular file may call the class shape, but doesn't have to implement it. It can be implemented somewhere else. In this case, it is. It's implemented in this other file that's called square, and that's, that implements the um, shape draw method to draw a, a square, but it's compiled code, right? So linking bring them together and and generates one executable. Okay, so no polymorphism so far. Polymorphism comes in if I decide to swap out the square file with another another file that implements the same method called draw on the shape class. And I can decide to link with that one, not with the previous one, generate a new executable that will behave like a lightning bolt and no longer like a square. And this is polymorphism, with the same contract being called on the draw method that takes no parameter. The last step of the code in C++ is when it's actually running on your machine. Um, at this stage, we've, we've got the classical polymorphism that we learn uh, at the beginning. It's inheritance, right? So I'm going to not going to dwell too much on that because it's so ubiquitous, but there's inheritance and virtual methods. Well, in this particular code, I've omitted the word public for the slide, but essentially that's C++ code. Now, there's something particular with runtime polymorphism. It's that it's extremely powerful. 
it's the only polymorphism where you can swap out the actual implementation every time you call it. So every time we call it, we're going to check which type is actually behind the interface. And as you all know, a great power comes with great responsibility. And there's a cost associated to that. Not getting into details of virtual stable thing, but essentially it's the cost of, of finding out which type is behind the interface. Also, and that's more particular to C++, there's another cost in the code because it's, it's less simple to do dynamic allocation in C++ because you have to manipulate it with through pointers and references. It's getting much better, but it's still not, not as simple as just a, a type. Right. What I've presented you so far is this. The various times of resolutions of polymorphism in C++. But there is much more. First of all, there's one time I haven't talked about because it's not in C++, so I'm not going to get into this, but some languages, they resolve polymorphism the first time the, the, the interface is called at runtime, and it's done once and for all. But there's much more. For example, there is various sizes of thing we can do polymorphism on. S for example, uh, just a value or a, a, a function, a class, a file, or a whole module. I haven't done that explicitly, but this is what polymorphism can do. And there's much more. Um, there is how many things you could dispatch at the same time. So single dispatch is when there is just one thing that's resolved when we call it typically virtual functions in C++. There's just one thing to solve. It's which class is in the, down in the hierarchy. But some other polymorphism allow double dispatch, which is essentially pa passing two polymor polymorphic things to a function, and they are resolved when they're passed to the function both at the same time. And the general case for that is multiple dispatch with any number of things resolved at the same time. But there's more. Um, we've talked about times of resolution, but there's also a moment where polymorphism is checked, as in, is this thing I'm calling on the contract valid as the contract has it? It's, it, it varies um, for every polymorphism, and it's not necessarily the same time as time of resolution. For example, in C++, runtime polymorphism is checked at compile time if I'm calling the right thing in the interface. And there's also one thing. Um, is the interface. Is the interface explicit, as in, as in like runtime polymorphism, where there's an interface that writes out explicitly what the contract can do. And there is polymorphism that's implicit. So it's like duct typing. It's not implicit. OK. So now I want you to do two things. The first one is I want you to think about your language and where your language has access to in that space. Some languages have access to some places in that space. And the second thing I want you to do is to reach out and let me know what you found. I've presented just a subset of C++. And I probably don't know your language. So let me know what you found. I'll put it together and share it. You know, once I had the chance to make Michael Feathers, and I asked him, how did you get better at programming? And he told me, understand the differences between languages. And that's why I think that polyconf is such a great idea, by the way. But if, if we understand how languages approach polymorphism, then we'll understand how to better design our code. So reach out and, and let me know. Okay, now, now, we, now we're going to see an example of how to apply what we've, say, what we've seen just before. So I'm going to use the example of mocking, mo mocking in unit test. So essentially, um, I've got a class, which is my production code, I'm calling it production class, that I want to test. And this class has a dependency on something else, 
In this particular example, it's an argument in a function, but it could be anything really. And for some reason, I can't fit that into a test. Maybe it's a DB, maybe it's UI, or maybe it's just complicated. But I, I can't fit that into a test. So I'm going to mark it out, as in replace this with another implementation that's simpler and that gets better into a test. So what we typically do for that is this refactoring that's called extra interface, right? So it consists of in replacing our dependency argument with a, an interface, a runtime interface with virtual functions. And the interface has exactly two implementations, one which is exactly the same original production argument, but with virtual functions instead of normal functions, and another one that's the mock, right? Because it's simpler. And this uses runtime polymorphism. And I think this is wrong. I think this is wrong because we don't near hear the power of runtime polymorphism. I'm not going to swap out at every moment during runtime. I'm, gonna swap out the, I'm not going to swap out the implementation of mocking and, and, and production. When I write code, I know in which file I am. I, I can even know which binary I am. Is it production binary or test binary? So I've got this info much earlier than when the code is running on client, on client um, machines, right? And having this virtual interaction has a cost on production code because the production code is waiting until the last moment to decide, is it test, is it production? Okay, it's production. I think that doesn't make sense. So. Why not using another type of polymorphism, one that's earlier? I found that in C++, it's convenient to use um, compile time polymorphism. So we're going to do redo the extra in interface, but at compile time. So I'm going to do a template instead of a virtual function. And I have this implicit, because template happened to be implicit as of today in C++. And I will have two implementation that don't inherit from the interface. It's just template code, and that's compile time polymorphism. Well, there is um, a bit more to know about the technical details of this, how to, in particular, not show the implementation in the template in the header. But I'm happy to discuss that in, in more details. I've got that on my blog, if you're interested, on Free on C++. Okay, so if I had to sum this takeaway, sum up this takeaway, I'd say that we need to realize that the classical runtime polymorphism has a cost. And we shouldn't postpone its resolution if we know the info earlier. And if I had to sum it up globally, I'd say that we need to realize that there's much more than one type of polymorphism. So next time you need polymorphism, think about what your language can do and about which one fits best in your case. Think about where your language has access to in the polymorphism space. Reach out, let me know. You've got my Twitter, you've got my email. You reach out, let me know. I'll pull it together, share it, so that together we learn how to write code that's more efficient and better designed. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.